Hey you guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I will be walking you through this painting that I did a couple of days ago. I finished this for a while now and I couldn't really do a voiceover because I was going through problems with my voice. So since it's been a long time since I've painted this, I think it'd be a good idea for me to, to talk about something else while I also talk about this piece. So I want to start with this one. This was done on my Cotman watercolor paper, which is still my favorite paper for gouache. I do want to say that I've almost finished my sketchbook and it's one of the few sketchbooks where I feel like I'm not really compelled to try something else because this one works so well. I just love the smoothness of it and how it takes gouache. I don't know that I like it so much for watercolors, which is what it's meant to be for. Every time I do get the questions about which sketchbook I want to recommend, I always go with the Etcher Lab watercolor sketchbook because I feel like it is more versatile than this one. But for just gouache and especially bigger pieces like this one, this Cotman paper is just perfect, so I'm almost fully done with this one. I do want to do a sketchbook tour as soon as I finish my next painting on this sketchbook. It's not that many pages so I don't know if it would make that much sense to do a, a full tour on it but I do want to do um, little studies on it first before I can fully show it and I would feel like uh, there would be more for me to show on this one before I do the tour but yeah. I'm still using my Holbein gouache and it's the traditional one. I feel like I should be clarifying which kind of gouache I'm using because I didn't know this before that Holbein acrylic gouache is actually more well known than the traditional gouache. I've started noticing it more recently because of... I just started getting into Instagram again and I've been checking my messages from new people and one of the first things that I always get asked about is the differences between acrylic gouache and just this traditional gouache that I use. So I feel like in future videos I should be clarifying which one I'm using. So this is traditional gouache and I've also been starting to use a lot of different colors from different sets and especially the ones from the Irudori sets. So a lot of the colors now aren't from the basic set. I also saw a comment asking about what kind of colors and exactly what kind of color names I would suggest for people who want to do portraits but don't really want to mix their own skin tones. And I'm hoping you guys can be a little bit more patient with that because I have actually ordered more individual colors for myself and I want to test them out first to try and see which colors I think would work well for skin tones because ideally you want to mix your own skin tones but with gouache it's great to already have specific colors in hand if you want to use them so I'm gonna delay my answer for that question for this moment and try to get a more informed answer first before I can get back to it. I want to go back to this painting and my main goal for this one was to actually keep it pretty light. What I really wanted to see was different colors in the dress. I wanted to show that it was still a white dress but I wanted there to be a lot of different colors that would make it look like it's almost iridescent. And so I was struggling a little bit to try to figure out which kinds of pops of color would 
give me that effect without just compromising the fabric still looking like it's supposed to be white and so there was a lot of planning involved in this piece before I could even take it to the actual painting stage so I planned this all digitally I wanted to see which colors would work well together and I did eventually come up with using sky blue and a very light peachy color to finally get the exact kind of effect that I want and I wanted those two bright and light colors to not be overshadowed by any dark desaturated colors so I really just paired those two poppy colors with very warm grays that I feel like would work well to capture the folds of the dress but also not overshadow the pops of color that I wanted to put in there and also for just for the look of the overall painting what my main goal was to have it be primarily be a red and green piece with a lot of different colors in the lighter values in the painting so I really wanted the darker values to just be the red and the green I wanted those two colors to be very dark and just stand next to each other but then if you looked closely at the painting you would get to see lots of almost rainbow colors that is sort of camouflaged against those very dark contrasting colors so yeah that was the look that i initially wanted for the painting and i think i did actually get that in the end because i planned the painting really well and also because i couldn't do the voice over right away and so i had more time to work on this painting i feel like it just worked out well in the end it was very systematic in how this painting worked out i didn't really feel like i was lost when it came to actually painting it out so since overall it was very straightforward, I also want to talk about starting a new medium and how much of a struggle it was for me before and how I approach starting a new medium now that I'm in this stage of sort of my art journey. So I've basically been doing art since I was a kid. I've been drawing a lot all throughout school but I've only started painting three years ago so there is a very long stretch of time where I feel like I didn't want to paint and even that I didn't want to transition into colors. Before I started painting I only started working with colors um, a year before that so there is a long time where all I did was black and white and colors didn't feel at all important to me. I think that before I focused more on the values and I felt like it was the thing that you had to get out of a photo to get sort of the essence of a photo without really making it look too much like the actual photograph. So I had this thing where I felt like if I worked in colors while working straight off of photographs that it would look too much like what it already does and it sort of defeats the purpose of me even drawing a photo. But now, since I've been studying a lot of photos and I've been working with a lot of colors, I sort of now see how you can, even while working off of a reference photo, sort of just tweak it to explore your creativity still. And that's, I think, the one thing that I really love about painting is that you could always take colors from the photo and still be able to highlight the things that you love about the photo without just straight up taking all of the colors in the exact photo. I really think that the easiest medium to start with when you want to get into painting is really watercolors because even though it's very different from all of the other mediums in painting and how those other mediums work, it's also the most versatile kind of you could always start with very simple washes of color with watercolors and you can then transition on into into multiple layers in one painting so I really felt like starting with watercolors made me sort of see different mediums more and it really made me feel like the fear in starting something new wasn't really warranted if 
it's a medium that is still really flexible and that you can still do whatever you want when you're starting out and so as soon as i started working with watercolors i started to see the possibilities in different mediums so i started working with different colored pens more and that's how i got into drawing with my red pens i even started working more with my colored pencils which is something that i had before watercolors but i didn't really feel like uh, but i was really scared to explore before i got into watercolors i think that i was so confident <laughs> then with my with approaching a new medium that i sort of hit a snag when i first started with gouache when I got my first gouache set, um, I was so intimidated by it because it works so differently from watercolors and that was my main medium at that time. So you could even see in one of my earlier sketchbook tours where I said that gouache just isn't the medium for me and I was basically just giving up. But it's funny now to think about that because um, I do consider gouache now to be my main medium. So I really feel like working with watercolors and especially just taking that step into painting really opened my eyes into the choice of starting a new medium and it's sort of made more relevant now because I've started watching Ink Master and it's this show where they, it's basically just a tattooing show and now I want to get into it too. And so I felt like for these past few weeks, I've been itching to really start with that. And it's a very unsettling feeling when you want to start a new medium, but you don't have the means to actually do it. So for a while now, I've sort of almost been at a crossroads where I don't know if I should take that step. And it's something that is obviously is more high stakes than other mediums because it's more permanent and it's also on someone else's body. So while I was painting this and my past few videos, I felt like I was really just killing time before I can finally start tattooing. And so also at the time I was taking a course in Domestica just so I can sort of get the basics of it right and try to get, trying to see what kind of equipment I need. It's a lot of frustration this past few weeks and I think that I just want to finish the course before I can really take that leap into starting something that is so high stakes, not only because it's very permanent and it's something that I almost know nothing about, but also because it is a very expensive thing to start with. I really don't think it's safe to get the very to get very cheap. Uh, machines that I don't know will harm people so I want to be able to save and really get the proper equipment before I can really start with that so as soon as I decided that I was gonna take more courses on it first before I take the leap I felt like I was I felt like I was free of that frustration now that I've accepted that, that I can wait on that for now and so Towards the end of this painting, I felt like I was more free and I was enjoying painting with gouache again. I've also even started another gouache painting, which I'm really excited about. I really feel like it would be a good one. And for now, it's finished, but it's a study, but it's a digital study. So I want to see how it works once I've painted it out with gouache. And I want to see how you guys like it too, because I really feel like this next one is going to be good. So yeah that is it for this one it's a little bit more chatty than my other videos but i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you everyone for watching and thank you to my patrons for supporting me i will be seeing you guys again soon